Okay, so this video is going to be about the final part of the syllabus, which is the demographic dividend and the ways in which population could be considered a resource when contemplating possible futures. So some key terms in this part of the syllabus are population momentum, which is the tendency for a population to grow despite low birth rates and fertility rates due to a relatively high concentration of people in their childhood pre-childbearing or childbearing years. This may increase the number of births in the coming years and lead to births, births that exceed the deaths. So it's basically when the population has a large proportion of people in kind of their childbearing years. So that can vary maybe it could be between, for example, 18 to 40, like just area, it, ages in which people are able to have children um, or even pre-childbearing so that would be kind of teenage years for example and so in the future that means that there will be an increase in the birth rates um, and these births may exceed the deaths so then the population would grow. Um, there's also the key term population projection which are predictions about future populations based on the current trends in fertility, mortality, and migration. So basically just trying to predict or project the population based on what's happening right now. Okay, so demographic dividend. So what is the demographic dividend? It's the economic growth that may result from changes to a country's age structure due to the shift from people living short lives and having large families to living long lives and having small families. So what's an example that we can use here? So one key case study is South Korea. So what are the causes of its demographic dividend? The societal transition following the Korean War in the 1950s, which um, one of the main parts of this was the 1962 first family planning campaign in Korea, which led to the total fertility rate falling from 6.3 to 2.2 to 1.2 in 2005. Um, since 1962, of course. This led to an increase in life expectancy from 53 years in 1960 to 79 years in 2005. And there's also been large educational investment. So that has promoted the role of women in society and just educated this the population as a whole about kind of healthcare um, and allowed them to reach a high level of economic development, thus kind of leading to smaller families and possibly the rising cost of having children. So what are the benefits of a demographic dividend? Economic growth, high levels, higher levels of education for women, increased family incomes, more saving, more capital accumulation, higher labor force participation, and this moved from 45% in 1960 to 65% in 2004. However, there are some challenges with this since the birth rate has fallen very low and work for parents or work in general might become demanding and unhealthy for individuals. Marriages are delayed and this may all contribute to the ne negative impacts of an aging population. So that's what you have to know for demographic dividend, what it is, these key terms and a case study example to use in um, your exam.